Tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern over on Jaguar Gatorade, a new college football video drops. In this video, we'll talk about a bizarre broadcasting controversy involving CBS, the NCAA, and Major League Baseball. And now, on with our feature presentation. The Josh McDaniels tenure in Las Vegas has gotten off to an absolutely horrible start. For a team that had playoff aspirations and was projected by the casinos and the odds makers to win over 10 games this season, it has been an absolute nightmare summed up by a constant inability to finish games late. When your point differential is only minus 5, so it's pretty average, and you didn't have a single win by double digits, so it's not like there's one game that's heavily inflating the number to make it look better than it really is, there's no reason that you should be 1-4. and four. But that's where the Raiders are sitting right now. They sit dead last in the AFC and the NFL for that matter, with their playoff hopes all but shot, and with their head coach, Josh McDaniels, rightfully getting a ton of criticism and heat thrown his way. And if there's any play that he's receiving backlash for in particular, and if there's any play that people are using to put his head on a silver platter and show why he can't be a successful coach in this league, it was this play and this decision right here. Leaving their offense out there to go for two in the lead. Hang on, let's back up just a bit before I show the play that left a lot of fans scratching their heads and left a lot of people saying that McDaniels was an idiot who cost his team the game by trying to get greedy for no reason. October 10th, 2022. It's week five of the NFL season, and we have an absolutely big Monday Night Football matchup on our hands in the AFC West between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Las Vegas Raiders. For the purposes of this, we're just going to focus on what this game means for the Raiders, because this game was essentially their season. Granted, it's not an ideal situation by any means to be on the ropes five weeks in, and to be in a must-win spot against the team that has not only made it to four straight AFC championships, but the team that last season swept you and outscored you 89-23 in the two meetings, for an average of 33 points per game, or five possessions. But considering the fact that you're 1-3 after some absolutely brutal losses, especially a Week 2 overtime loss to the Arizona Cardinals, where you led 23-7 to midway through the fourth quarter and somehow choked the game away, you need to win this one. Because since 2017, only one team in the NFL has started 1-4 and four and come back to make the playoffs with a record of 500 or better. And in a game that was not even the slightest bit controversial, and where every penalty, whether it was on a field goal where no one knows what holding is anymore, or whether it was on a roughing the passer where no one knows what defenders are even allowed to do anymore, was completely 100% legitimate, the Raiders shocked a ton of people when they jumped out in front to an early 17-0 lead, thanks to a touchdown pass from Derek Hart to Devontae Adams, a touchdown run on the goal line by Josh Jacobs, and a 53-yard field goal by arguably the best kicker in football right now not named Justin Tucker in Daniel Carlson. However, despite the hot start, by no means is this game over. We've seen the Chiefs do this many times before, where their offense gets going and they're able to erase a pretty substantial deficit. Sure enough, they do just that, as what followed was an onslaught that we've come to expect from Patrick Mahomes and company. Because on Kansas City's next five drives, they score four touchdowns and a field goal, racking up 30 points in the process. All four touchdowns were scored by tight end Travis Kelsey, who set a Monday Night Football record for most touchdown catches in a game. And he did this on just 25 receiving yards. The Chiefs try and go for two in order to make it a two-possession game, but they fail, so they're only up by seven. Even though blowing a 17-point lead obviously stinks, the Raiders at least have the ball in Derek Carr's hands, and they still have a shot to salvage this. And sure enough, on third and six, with the Raiders just past midfield, once again, Derek Carr launches a bomb in the direction of Devontae Adams. And Adams catches the pass, scoring a 48-yard touchdown which was his second of the game. Just like that, it's only a one-point game. The Raiders are an extra point away from tying this bad boy up and sending the Arrowhead Stadium crowd into a collective state of shock. Except, for some reason, Josh McDaniels decides not to do that. Because McDaniels decides in this spot that it would be a good idea for his team to try the two-point conversion and take the lead. This is an incredibly gutsy and risky play. Obviously, you can assure yourselves that the game is tied with an extra point, 
But if you miss the two-point conversion, you're still behind. But this is what McDaniels and company decide to do. They're going for the lead with four minutes left. And the end result? They hand to Jacobs. And he... No signal, they didn't get it. Yeah, not good. Oh yeah, I should mention, the Raiders lost by one point. So this play is what ended up deciding the contest. If the Raiders kick the extra point to make it a 30-30 game, we might be looking at a completely different outcome. We might be talking about the Raiders prevailing in overtime and winning it in a stunning upset. We might be talking about the Raiders salvaging their season and showing that they can compete in this ultra-competitive division. However, because the two-point conversion was missed, the Raiders lost the game. This play was criticized by a ton of people, and I truly mean a ton of people, as Josh McDaniels got destroyed for making this call. However, even though I think Josh McDaniels is an absolutely horrible head coach, I have to come to his defense here, because I had no problem with the decision to go for two. I actually didn't think the call was that bad, and if you think it was the wrong call, then maybe after this, you change your mind, because this call might not be as bad as you think it was. Welcome to In Defense Of. Let's dive right in. Before I go any further, I have to emphasize that I am strictly talking about the decision to go for two. I am not talking about his absolutely idiotic play calling at the end of the game, where you have third and one and fourth and one. You have a running back that's been gashing Kansas City all night long and has been averaging well over seven yards per carry, and you decide to call two long passing plays, including one on fourth down, where the receivers run into each other, and where no one's running a route even remotely close to the first down line a mere one yard away. That is indefensible, and I was debating doing today's episode as a dumb decisions on that, because that truly made no sense. However, while I will destroy McDaniels for that call until the cows come home, with this two-point conversion, honestly, I would have done the exact same thing. And to look at this, we need to break it down into two components. Number one, was the decision to go for two the right one? And number two, was the play call itself the right one? So naturally, let's start with the first part and break down whether this was the right decision. If you're the Raiders and you're Josh McDaniels, you have to go under the incredibly reasonable assumption that if the Chiefs get the ball back, you're not going to get the ball back and get a stop. This was not a low-scoring game. This was the Kansas City Chiefs we were talking about. On their previous five drives, they scored 30 points. On their previous four drives where the clock was not an issue, as in, they didn't have to worry about the end of the half, they scored four touchdowns. This was a team that picked up, on their previous five drives, 317 yards, and was averaging over 6.6 .6 yards per play. This was a team led by arguably the best quarterback in the game in Patrick Mahomes, who dating back to the middle of that first of the five drives, threw 28 passes and completed 22 of them for 220 yards and four touchdowns. You're watching a compilation of some of those passes right now. This meant that, from the middle of that first drive of that stretch, until this point in the game, Mahomes had a passer rating of 139. In other words, he was unstoppable, and everyone knew it. You have to go under the reasonable assumption that if you put the ball in Mahomes' hands, he's going to deliver, and that your defense will not be able to make a stop. You have to go under the assumption that you won't be touching the ball again, and that this is your last chance, even though we know from how the game went that this wasn't the case, and the defense actually was able to make a stop, while realizing that we can't look at these decisions with hindsight. So whether you go for two and get it, go for two and miss it, or kick the extra point and tie it, assuming you don't get a stop, and again, we have to go under that assumption based on everything we know from the past half that you're not getting a stop, you lose the game. But let's say that you do get a stop. Let's say that your defense somehow magically holds the Chiefs. If you go for two and you got it, congratulations. You just won the game. If you don't go for two, meaning that you kick the extra point and the game goes into overtime, there's a highly likely chance that you've got to do it again meaning that to now win the game, you've got to stop Patrick Mahomes twice in a row, even though he's thrown four touchdowns in his last five drives and has posted a 139 passer rating in that stretch. 
What seems more likely? Picking up two yards on a two-point conversion and getting one stop on Mahomes? Or getting two stops on Mahomes? Because for me, I'll take the first option any day of the week. And you know what the other part of the equation is here? Suppose you get the two-point conversion to go, meaning you're up 31-30 and the Chiefs get the ball. This means that the Chiefs are way more likely to take some deep shots down the field compared to a 30-30s high game. When you're trailing 31-30, until you're comfortably in field goal range, you're not necessarily worried about the clock and trying to use that to your advantage so that you can score and give your opponent no time left. You're just worried about scoring. In a 30-30 game, not so much. You usually see that balance. What that means is that, down 31-30, the Chiefs are more likely to try long passes that could result in touchdowns, but also means that you get to touch the ball again and answer. In other words, the benefits of going for two and having it work are significantly better than the benefits of kicking the extra point, while the downsides of going for two and failing versus going for the extra point are, in all honesty, pretty similar. If this was a low-scoring game where your defense was playing lights out, it's a completely different story. But with the way Mahomes was playing, and the fact that they scored a touchdown on literally every single drive in the second half so far, yeah, I have no problem with going for two. But what about the play call itself? What about the decision to give the ball to Josh Jacobs? I've got no problem with this either. It was the correct call, because the Chiefs could not stop Jacobs all day. Prior to the two-point conversion, on the night, the Raiders had three plays where they needed one or two yards to either score the touchdown if they were down by the goal line, or get the first down. And they gave the ball to Jacobs. Want to know, on those three times, how many of them they converted? Three. They got all three of them. Any time they gave the ball to Jacobs in a short yardage situation, it worked incredibly well, and worked like it was supposed to. On top of that, Jacobs was the hot hand. He was having maybe the best game of his career. On the day, he had 154 rushing yards, which was a career high, and he was averaging a whopping 7.3 yards per carry, which was the second highest total of his career. Coincidentally, the only other time he had over 7 yards per carry was in a 2019 game against the Kansas City Chiefs. And remember, for this play to work, you need 2 yards. On Jacob's 17 carries on the night before the 2-point conversion, he either picked up 2 yards or picked up the first down on 16 of them. 16 out of 17 times that Jacobs got the ball, he either got two yards, got a first down, or got a touchdown. Only one time did he have what would have been considered a failed run in that situation. You might as well have called Josh Jacobs Lionel Richie this game, because he was having a party all night long. So can you really blame McDaniels if he was going to go for two? for calling a play to a guy who was red hot, and for a guy who had picked up the requisite yardage over 94.1% of the time? Because I definitely can. Again, this raises the question of why, late in the game when you got the ball back, you had 3rd and 1 and 4th and 1, and didn't give him the ball once, and instead, put your faith in deep balls. And I can't defend that whatsoever. That was inexcusably bad on the part of McDaniels, to the point where that could have easily been a dumb decisions episode on its own but I can't possibly blame McDaniels for not just going for two, but for deciding to give it to a superstar running back and hoping for the best, considering it was working the entire game. Just to recap, by going for two, you set up a situation where if you get it, you only have to stop the unstoppable Patrick Mahomes once instead of twice, and you set up a scenario where you're more likely to get the ball back if you need it. You set up a situation where the reward is significantly better than the reward for kicking the extra point, and the risk if it fails, assuming you have no faith in your defense, isn't really any different. And to capitalize on this situation, you gave the ball to your running back, who's been having a crazy good game, who's been torturing the Chiefs defense the entire night, and who's been picking up two yards, which is all you need here, on a regular basis. Because even though McDaniels blew it later in the game, and even though his coaching generally leaves a ton to be desired, when you consider all of these facts, this is definitely a decision that you can make a defense for. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com 
and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaragator9. To see college football videos, subscribe to Jaragator8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.